everyone. Today we are talking about the idea. Today we are talking about the idea of graphing, a, specifically in slope-intercept form. So we're going to be graphing lines in slope-intercept form. Go ahead and follow along with your notes sheet. Linear equations in slope-intercept form look like the following. If you like color coding, this might be a good opportunity to do so. Y equals mx plus b. In this equation, the m is the slope or rate of change, which is basically the way that the function is changing. If the function is constantly adding 5, for every x value, then the slope would be 5. If it was constantly adding 7, then the slope would be 7. If it was subtracting 3 every time, it would be a negative 3. So that's the slope. B is the y-intercept, meaning where the line crosses the y-axis. If you're still having a difficult time remembering, the y-axis is the one that is vertical, and the x-axis is the one that is horizontal. So let's say, hypothetically, you had a line, and it crossed at positive 2, then b would be positive 2. That's the y-intercept. It's going to make a little bit more sense with our examples. So let's go on to the next slide here. Slope is described as the change in y divided by the change in x. If you didn't know, change is sometimes labeled with a little triangle, a delta. The change in y over the change in x. You may have seen this in another class as rise over run. If you want to think about rise like an elevator, it's either going up or down, and run is like a conveyor belt, it's either going right or left. So if we looked at this graph over here, we would notice that the rise was a positive 1, and that the run was a positive 3. As a result, we take the change in y, which was 1 over 3, and we end up with 1 third. When graphing, start with the y-intercept, then use the slope. So the y-intercept is your starting point, and the slope is how you're changing from your starting point. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get into some examples so we can understand how to do this. So, I'm looking at example one. I think back to the form slope-intercept form, I know it's y equals mx plus b. So if I look at my equation, I realize that my slope is negative 4, and I realize that my y-intercept is positive 1. Again, my notes say to start with the y-intercept. So I'm going to go to my y-axis, and I'm going to find positive 1. So that's right here, positive 1. Now with my slope, it's negative 4. So again, I know that this is rise over run, or the change in y over change in x. Now I only see one number here, but if I'm looking at this whole number, I can actually make it into a fraction by putting it over 1. So now I have negative 4 over 1. So negative 4 is my change in y, and positive 1 is my change in x. So from this starting point, I'm going to go down 4 spaces. You might be wondering, why am I going down 4 spaces? Down, because it's negative. And the reason that we're moving vertically is because it's the change in y first. 
So 4 is how I'm changing with my y-axis. Negative 4 over positive 1. Positive 1, that means I'm going to move to the right one space. Right also means positive. I can draw my second point, and I can draw a straight line through both of these points. Make sure to draw arrows at the end, because that means that the line goes on forever. Okay, so let's check out example two. Example two, I'm going to do the same thing. I've got y equals red for the m, x plus green for the b. Now again, this is my y-intercept, and again, this is my slope. So in this situation, my slope is the one-third, and my negative 2 is my y-intercept. So I start with my y-intercept at negative 2. That's this right here. Then I'm going the change in y over the change in x. So positive 1 over positive 3. So that means with the y-axis, I'm going up 1, positive 1. And then with the x-axis, I'm going to the right 3. 1, 2, 3, positive 3. I draw my second point. I can draw a straight line through these points. Again, draw your arrows. That means that the line goes on forever. Let's move on to the next two examples. For example three, I'm going to keep following that same process. So y equals m x plus b. In this situation, I notice that there's actually only one number. Now the m is the one that's attached to my input, my x. So I know that in this case, m, or the slope, is equal to negative 2. Again, same situation. I can put it negative 2 over 1, because negative 2 divided by positive 1 is still negative 2. So that's my change in y over my change in x. But I have no idea where to start, because I don't know what number is at the end. Since I have nothing there, the number that can represent nothing is zero. So plus zero. I'm going to find my starting point. It's my y-axis because this is my y-intercept. So that's at zero. Then I'm going to go ahead and follow these instructions based on my slope. My change in y is two. This is my y-axis, so I'm going to go down two spaces negative 2 and positive 1 that means to the right one space again this is using some of our knowledge from plotting points if you want to keep going with the pattern you could even get a straighter line so down 2 to the right one down 2 to the right one then you can draw a point every place that you land that way when you draw your line it can be straighter and make sure to draw those arrows so one more time, just as a reminder, if you're looking at your x-axis, positives to the right, negatives to the left. If you're looking at your y-axis, positive is up, negative is down. Let's move on. So for example four, y equals m x plus b. b is my y-intercept. So, I look at my equation, and that matches up with positive 1. I know that's my starting point on the y-axis. A lot of people want to start here. That is incorrect, because that would be on the x-axis, and that would be your x-intercept. That is not where you want to go. So let's erase that, make sure we're not confused. Now I look at my slope, my m, and I realize that, that is going to be negative 2 fifths negative two-fifths. It's my change in y over change in x. Meaning that I'll change with the y down two spaces. And then I'll change with my x, positive five. I draw my second point. Now I have two points that I can draw a line through. Okay. Let's move on to example five and six, and that will be it. Example five. So 
I've got y equals mx plus b. Again, this situation, I can find my slope here. And what can I put this over to make it a fraction? You should be putting it over for a positive 1. And it's always going to be a positive 1. It won't be a negative 1. Negative 1 would change the value. Negative 5 divided by a positive 1 still means negative 5. The b, that's this last number, positive 1. Great. So now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start at positive 1 on my y-axis. I'm going to move down 5 spaces. I'm going to move to the right 1 space. I draw my next point. I can draw a line through them. And draw those arrows at the end. Now on this last one, I'm not even going to do the slope triangle. I'm just going to go ahead and just plot the points. So again, it's y equals m x plus b. b, negative 6, that's my y-intercept. And 3 fourths is my slope. I'm going to start at negative 6. You might notice that this only goes down to negative 5. So go ahead and just assume where negative 6 would be. I'm going to go up 3 spaces. And then to the right, four spaces. Draw my next point. I can draw a straight line through those. Draw my arrows. And I can get rid of my slope triangle. This is the line. This is the equation that represents. This is the line, actually, that represents the equation. Y equals 3 fourths x minus 6. You don't have to draw that triangle. That triangle is just to help you to be able to find that line. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know.